We'll go down, y'all. What up? <laughs> what's up? What's that? What's that? Not much. Not much. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm staying blessed. What about you? You chilling or what? How you been? <laughs> I've been amazing. Just um, getting adjusted to a new life out here in Philly. Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy. Look, four months and four months. Look, I just want to let y'all know that. I don't feel like this is going to be something special. Moreover, it's just like an interview for us to kind of look back in a year from now. You know what I'm saying? And just, you know, like, I guess just look back and see, like, did we accomplish what we, what we, what we said we was going to do? You know, it's just things of that nature, you know. Ellie For looking sure. fly, though. You said what? Ellie looking fly, though. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I got all this, I think, like cotton. That's or, cotton? I don't know what this lint from my sweater. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so how's the how's everything going? You excited for everything to come, the new changes, the new you? Ah, twenty twenty one is gonna be a movie, yo. It really will be. I'm nervous, though. I don't know what to expect. Being nervous is good. Good nerves are... A little nerves so? are... Like, yeah, can I, because... Can I ask you can... something, though? Yeah. Like, do you feel like being nervous has to do with, like, belief? Yes. And no. Because it's, like, starting new things, um, I think is always... Uh, depending, I think, on the type of person you are, could be scary, Right. But starting is the first part, is the first step. And so doing that just shows a lot about who you are as an individual. So it's big. A lot of people are afraid to start or try new things. Um, so that's one. But I think a little bit of nerves is always good because it keeps you on your toes. But just doing it shows that you know that there's a good outcome about that, that is going to happen, right? There are good things. Um, that you're looking forward to and you're not afraid like starting shows you're not afraid and having a little nerves is because you don't know the outcome but i think that's part of the journey right making sure that you enjoy the journey um no matter what and doing your best putting your best foot forward and just giving everything your all and so nerves allow you to to have a little bit fear so you can push harder so that you won't fail that's how I see it. That's a good way to say. Oh, I was just, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I just always tell people like, hey, just don't expect what you don't expect and just give it y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's what I tell my yeah, life. Ex expectations could be a big downfall. And it's like, you, you keep sometimes having no expectation is it, good. Like, I remember I told this one teacher one time, I was, like, back in high school, and I was like, Miss, is it okay to have good expectations, like, high expectations? And she was like, never do that. And I was like, why? And she was like, because if you set expectations too high and you fall down, like, you're going to be really sad, you're going to be really depressed, blah, 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 and just things of that nature. And she left me at that, you know, and I was walking home with my head high, I mean, my head down. And then there was another teacher, she was like, what's wrong? She was like, you don't seem like yourself. And I was like, it's because this, this teacher, like, I had asked this question, and I was like, and I want to ask you this, too. And I was like, and she was like, go ahead. And I was like, you think it's a bad thing to set your expectations high? And she was like, of course not. She was like, it's, it's, a, it's a really good thing to set your expectations high. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, but why? I was like, if you fail, like, you're just going to, like, regret it. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, no. So it's like, if you fall, it just means you got to pick yourself back up twice as harder and try all over again. And I really love that shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know if I should just live in that, like, in that environment where it's like, I don't know what to expect or if I should just live with my expectations super high, you know? I think, like, it's it's like seeing the, the glass half full or half empty, right? You could have any circumstance and see the positive in things or you could see the negative in it. But we all know what you put out is what you get back. So That's if right. you're focused on the negative, like all you're going to attract is negativity. So you always got to look at the positive. So 
it's not the fact of having any type of expectation is bad. It's like when you're when you're attached to it, right? When you get attached to something and it doesn't follow through, you're gonna be disappointed. That's like having your expectations in a person. They have control of what the outcome is. You don't. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have expectations on people, because people are going to let you down. Yeah, Whether so. you know they mean to or not, they're going to. But you can't control how that happens. You can only control what you do. So it's like, don't have expectations, but you got to set the bar. That's, it's different. You got to set a high bar. So don't have expectations of like, this has to be like this. this. People have to do this, right? You know business, how that works. People uh -huh. come and go. People don't feel like they have to do anything, but you feel like you have to do something. So as long as you're focused on what you can control, then you can set expectations on those things. But anything outside of your control, you can't have high expectations for. But always set the bar high. Like, you know, we did that convention today. Today was day two. It was amazing. And Ariel Martin said something really, really good. She said, you know, have your belief have your action, have your repetition. That's exactly what the bar is. Set the bar, the bar high for your belief, right? Having no belief, you have no vision, no goal then, right? Your belief is so important. So set your belief high, set high action, right? Make sure that you're, you're acting out, like fulfilling out certain things that are gonna get you to achieve what you believe that you want. The belief in yourself, like meeting that goal, and then, you know, making sure that you're constantly repeating the things day in and day out that are going to help you get there. So that, set that bar super high. If hey. you miss it, cool. You end up somewhere here. But like having expectations, if you're placing that on people, you can't right. control what people do. I hope y'all guys are taking notes. I hope y'all guys are taking notes. <laughs> But nah, it's just apart from that, I feel like we should already hop in this interview. I know I already asked you a couple questions, but that was just off the bat, you know what I'm saying? That was cool. <laughs> I really just wanted to get that off my chest. But nah, apart from that, I guess my first question would be from you is, uh, I don't know how long you've been in this business. How long have you been in this business? A little over a year. A little over a year? So yeah, yeah. like looking back maybe two, three years ago? You know what I'm saying? Like, who were you as an individual and coming into this business? How has that translated? How have you evolved? How have you allowed yourself to grow into a new person? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, to kind of go back, <laughs> three years right. ago, I did, well, a little over three years ago because of the timing, um, I actually did start the business and I was in it for a few months and then I left. And then a year ago, a little over a year ago, I came back and I'm here to stay. So back then, I was definitely a completely different person from who I am now. And I know that 100% when I had joined back this time around and I actually started doing the business and sharing the opportunity with people and, and educating people and informing people, I realized that the first time around, I really wasn't doing the business at all. I thought I was. Mm. You know, I wanted to, but I was afraid to. And I felt like I had a hard time. No, I didn't feel like I had a hard time sharing the opportunity with people because I was just afraid. And I, I guess it was the fear of just people saying no or, you know, people not wanting to do it. And so even when I had joined, you know, it was like, y'all interested in doing the business, right? And it's like, yeah, I, I'm interested. <laughs> and, you know, it was like that, yeah, but in the back of your mind, you're like, mm, I don't really know. But you know you want to. You know you should. You know the benefits. You see everyone winning. So you want to. But, like, deep down inside, you're, like, battling yourself. And so, like, who I was before, I feel like, I feel like I, I'm not exactly that same person, but I've, I've come a long way. So for me, I've always felt like I'm very introverted. You know, we hear this a lot in the business. I don't want to talk to people. 
you know, I've always felt like I'm socially awkward or, you know, I, I struggle being in crowds. And a lot of people watching this that know me probably are like, what? Because I have had friends that when I tell them this, they're like, that's not true. Like, you're lying. But it's like, I'm very 50-50. I can be super social or I can be very to myself and just introverted and like, I can't, like I have social anxiety and I don't think it outwardly shows, but it, inside it would, it would kill me. Mm. And being in this business, it has allowed me to kind of like break that down. Like, I don't know if you remember um, at the convention in Houston, like, you know, I brought you to speak to different people and I would, I was talking to different people that I had met over the course of the couple of months in the business who like really wanted to approach certain chairmen, really had questions to ask certain people and were afraid. And I was looking at them like, why are you afraid? But the crazy thing is that was me before. So I know why they were afraid. I understand <laughs> maybe for exactly the same reason, but I get it. But at the same time, I think I was just a person who I just like, I don't really have anything to ask you because you told me everything. And now it's time for me to go out and do what you have shared. So I've always been a person like, well, I know what I'm supposed to do. I just need to break out of my shell and do it. And I'm at a point where I have finally broke out of that shell to do the things I know I'm supposed to do. I know I'm capable of doing without fear. You know, I'm, I'm in a much better place where it's like, oh, whatever. You say no, I, you, whatever, you're lost. Um, I know the value here and what you're unfortunately missing out on. But I also, I have no feel of like anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, I'm afraid to speak to someone. Why am I afraid to speak to you? For what? We're no different. And mm. so that has made me, um, I think, a stronger person and has pushed me in different areas in the business because I've always had a I don't care attitude about a lot of things. And that's just always been that no matter where I work, I don't need to be here. I don't need you. You know, that's always kind of been my attitude. And so I think having that personality has just allowed me to blossom in different ways in different areas in this business. But just the fact that I had to approach people and share the opportunity in a way that made me super uncomfortable is just made me become more sociable and just, has allowed me to kind of help other people because I realized over like the convention that, you know, a lot like, you know, you have, you actually have a question back then. I didn't really have questions, but I just like didn't really want to approach people at all. And so being in a position where I've, I'm entirely fearless, I felt like, okay, cool. Like, let me help you do this. And I think I, before it, I wasn't in a place where I felt like I can help people the way I wanted to. And overcoming those fears of, of speaking to people, of just saying whatever and not being concerned of what people thought. Um, I'm not much of someone who really cares what people think of me, but every now and then it, you do have that little voice that just makes you start thinking like little things. You know, I internalize a lot of stuff I get in my head. And I've been able to just kind of break that and really not, not care at all. Like if someone told me no, if someone said anything that just rubbed me the wrong way it's it's whatever so i think uh, it's just made me a stronger person than i was before have you regretted any of these changes what was that have you regretted any of these changes whatsoever no because i think in this business you need to be tough and i'm i am a tough person but i i'm too nice of a person and I've learned that over the course of the business. And even now, I feel like I'm not as tough as I should be mm. in the business with, in the, with specific individuals. But every day, I've realized it's becoming easier for a lot of different reasons. Um, and so I'm just becoming, I'm becoming a boss. I'm not becoming, I am a boss, first of all. <laughs> Lady boss in the but, building. Gangster. But, Gangster. I'm, I'm <laughs> but I don't I don't regret any of it because it's it's making me a solid person in the business. In this business, you have to be tough. You have to be a certain type of person. Like you're not gonna go chairman being the person you was. 
And I'm, I'm glad that I'm shedding a lot of who I was and I'm becoming a better version of myself every day, if that makes sense. So it's like, I was nice. I'm still, I'm still nice. I'm still me, but I'm a better version of me. Mm. Like I can still have moments where I feel shy or I don't want to talk to people, but it's easy for me to switch that off and just be like, whatever. I have moments where I, I want to just be in the corner and just be to myself. And every now and then I get that, or, you know, I, I go and I step away, but I'm able to turn it off much easier and realize like, okay, I, I, it, this is business right now. I need to go mingle. I need to go, you know, help mm -hmm. everyone else. I know I don't want to talk to people right now, but I have to, well, I don't really have to, but I want to, <laughs> because, I, <laughs> because I mean, in this business, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. But I know I know what I want and need to do to help people and I know what I want and need to do to go next level. So so for me I have to because this these are things that are gonna put me in position to gain and, and have achieve what I want. So for me I have to because I know this is gonna lead me to where I want to be. So it's like okay, cool, this is what I have to do right now because I want to be here. And if I want to get there, I need to do these things. And so it's, it's pushing me closer to my direction and it's allowing me to be who I need to be in every moment and in, in every room that I'm in. And so it's bringing me closer to success. So no, I don't regret any of it. That is cool. Ellie's in testifying. She's, she used to be a seed in a very dark place, but now she's proud of you guys. She's a little plant. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I've seen the growth. It's been amazing. But now, nah, thank you for that. I really wanted to, to hear that from you, especially. But just coming on to the next question. Um, you come into this business, you've been in here for like a year now and things of that nature. But what has been one of your toughest challenges? And with that being said, I'm talking about like a very dark place. You know, when you grow, it's slow. And a lot of people don't understand that they're very, you know, they're not very passionate with that, you know, but you have to live in persistence and patience. So you've been in this business for a year now. It's like, what has been like one of your darkest places where you felt like you was in a dark tunnel, you know, like nowhere to go, nowhere, no guidance. So just you feeling alone, you know, like what has been, you know, really think about it for a second or if you have it in place. Like oh, I just, thank you. <laughs> just really want to ask you like, what has been like a tough challenge, you know? And how did you overcome that, you know? Did it take a lot of time? Like, was it a decision that held you back? You know, what is it really that allows you to overcome that really dark tunnel, you know? Was it yourself blocking the sunlight from you growing or, or just was it? I think any challenge I face or anything I go to is always me. Mm. You cannot point your fingers at other people for your own downfall, for your own demise, for the struggles you go through. Like, yes, outside factors can be a part of why you're where you're at, Right. But if you're still there, it's not because of those outside things. So it's you because believe, of you. So you believe like excuses don't really exist. I mean, because when to you say degree, that, yes. to a degree, yes, because we still have control over certain things in our life. And if you're not taking control and and leading your life in the direction that you want to be, then you right. can't keep pointing fingers. Because when you point your finger, what they say, right? There's one pointing out, but you got what? Three pointing back at you. Like, no matter what circumstance you're in, a part of it, <laughs> a part of it is still your fault. And so until you fix what's your fault, you can't fix your mouth to complain about all the things that are wrong. Like, I can sit here and blame everybody for why I'm where I'm at. But I need to understand that I'm where I'm at because something I didn't do, something I did wrong. And so I think one of my, my biggest challenges or something I struggled with, I think it's like separating to elevate. That's something that's really hard and very necessary. I think it's something that you have to, you have to do. You're gonna have to do it. If you wanna get to the next level, you gotta leave people behind. And, you know, it's hard because you want these people to go next level with you. You want to see people win. And it could be, it could be your family. It could be your friends. It could be a stranger you met and connected with. 
It could be someone who joined the business and then just stopped. But you know they need this. You know that this is going to benefit them. No matter what else they do, you know how much they need this. But they don't see it for themselves. And I think that's one of the hardest things because I, I really want to see people win. And it hurts to see people not believe in themselves. It hurts like hell. Why do you say that? Because, but I can't want something more for them than they, than they want it for themselves. And those are sometimes you have to leave those people behind. It's so hard to watch it happen, but you have to do it. And sometimes I had to do it because I need to go next level so they can watch me. They can see it happen and maybe they'll see it for themselves. Cause they'll be like, yo, I was with Ellie who <laughs> when we were at this level in the business and now she's a chairwoman. January 2021, she's a chairwoman. Like what? What happened you guys? And then it's gonna be like, yo, what did she do? We were doing the business together. And it's gonna be like, okay, come back, let me help you. Or maybe you don't wanna do the business, but you still wanted to, you know, become a consistent, profitable trader. And you're just like, damn, I missed out. Or you're at a point in your life where you're like, I'm finally ready to give it a try. I'm finally ready to listen. But you, I'm tired to, of telling people the same people over and over about this. I am tired of trying to convince people why they need this. Because I'm not in business to convince people. I'm not in business to make people do something that they don't want to do. But I'm in business to educate people about the possibility of what can happen for them if they, one, believe in themselves, and two, they decide to do the to, and take the necessary steps to get there. That three, I will be able to help and guide them to that point, whatever it is that, that they want to achieve. But if they're not willing to, to even give it a shot, I have to let that go and move on. And so for me, it's hard to realize that I'm leaving a lot of people behind. You know, we always say, meet you at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. And I, I'm going to be at the top, but I want to crowd the top. I want to crowd the top with my people. I want to crowd the top with, with people I grew up with, with family, with friends, with strangers that I met along the way, people that had joined the business and, and told me they, why they needed this opportunity so, so bad. I want to crowd the top with everybody. But that's impossible if people don't see that they're able to be at the top with me. They don't see it for themselves. And so that's something that I struggle with a lot. But I realized I can't do anything about it because I could only control what I can do. And I can't make someone believe in themselves. I can't make someone see something that they don't see in themselves. I can't make someone decide that they want to make time for this. I can't make someone see value. I've already showed them value they've already seen. You could only do something but so much, right? People got to meet you halfway. And if you can't meet me halfway, then my job is done. Because if I'm there, you, you got to meet me the other way. You, you got to do your part. And so I've just been okay with, with letting people go. Like 2020, I've let a lot of people go. But it doesn't have to be forever. But you got to realize you need to separate to elevate. And everybody has a season in your life. Everyone's not meant to be in your life forever. But it's hard, but it has to be done. I know that success leaves clues. <laughs> and I'm, I'm following that clue like crazy. I'm glued to it. I'm behind every single one, picking it up, picking it up, picking it up on my way to the top. And I'm, I'm leaving those clues for anybody else who, who, wants, who wants to pick it up and follow the trail. But I, I need to, for me to go next level, I need to, I need to change the things that are holding me back. 
I need to change myself. And if that means that I have to become a new person and leave everyone behind just to, to come back and help them, to come back and pull them up, then that's what I got to do. It's been hard, but I know it's worth it. So moving onward and upward. That's it. But you have to love people enough to let them go. So yeah. That's really what it is. I love you, but I love you enough to walk away from you. Right. I'm sorry that we don't really see the same vision, but I'm headed one way. I wish I could take you with me, but we just don't have the same belief. Exactly. It's just what it Do is. Do you feel like uh, you've been going through that in the business? Letting people go? I've always been the type of person where I've always been alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, always. You were. Correction. <laughs> <laughs> I was alone, so it's like, I don't know. When you ask me that, it's like, I've never really had to let go of anybody because I ain't really had nobody, you know? This is my familia. This is my family. This is where I'm resonating. This is where I'm evolving and growing now, you know? So it's like, nah, it's never been a problem for me, for real. So what does it feel like to have family now? Oh. Uh, I don't know, man. And it's not even that. It's just the simple fact that I've never had it before. So it's like, it's just overwhelming, you know? Like, I don't really know how to take it all in that all at once, you know? Like, just having that support, just having that, you know, like, yo, I was mad yesterday because, you know, the I, have you heard about Rhonda's launch pad? Yeah. The launch pad that she got, like, yo, like, I was mad I couldn't go yesterday, you know? I couldn't have a ride, and I was just fucking mad because, you know, like, it's just being around all those people and it's just not all those people it's just like this is not family you know like, i hate not being around my family you know like these are the people that i'm gonna see like you from now who oh, i'm cheering and things of that nature you know like i'm gonna like, i love hearing stories where they talk about oh i knew cash when he was a p1 i knew slice narrow when he was like a p a p1 you know what i'm saying like i wish i was there you know but it's like no i'm creating my own story like, I'm going to be able to say, you know, I was there when D was, like, P1. I, I was there when, when Ellie was P1. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just things that are nice. Like, nah, 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 Ellie's a, a C50, and I was there to see the growth. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what I really love about this family. Like, it's dope. Yeah. But, um, I'm going to ask you this. Um, where do you see yourself from a year from now? A year from now, I see myself in a whole new city or country, um, changing a new 500 plus lives. Cause uh, I'm in Philly now. I just got here, what, like two days ago, three days ago. And the goal is to impact 500 in the next about 90 days or so. So it's, it's new. It's crazy, it's exciting, it's scary, but it's got to get done. Like this is information that that needs to be shared. This is stuff that people need to know about and take advantage of. Like it's just major. That's great. You really need to, you really need to take yourself accountable for that. For real. Yeah. Cool question. What's your why? My why? Damn. How many so words? much. The way you say it, it's like a, a lot of whys. A lot of whys because, you know, originally I started this business always first, first and foremost, always for myself. You know, if I can't, if I can't help someone, if I can't help myself, let's start there. If I can't help myself, I can't help someone else. In order for me to help someone else, I need to have the information, the education, the experience, the, like just everything. So I need to know that. And I got a whole bunch of dreams and goals. And so if I'm going to do anything, I need to do it for myself. Right. Like I have to do it for myself. No one's going to do it for me. And I want to do so much. I have a list of things I want to do to help people, to help different communities. 
And so, you know, that's where that starts. But of course, my family, you know, they've, they've done a lot uh, to allow me to have the opportunities that I have, to be able to travel the world, to have gone to great schools, to have great experiences growing up, to just know everything that I know. Like, I appreciate the sacrifices they've made that has allowed me to be who I am and where I am now. And so I want to thank them in a million different ways and grant them everything they've ever wanted. Um, you know, and for everyone that I've helped, uh, who, who has come to me and trusted me to help them achieve their goals, to go next level, to quit their job, to make additional income, to take care of their family, like they have become part of my why. You know, like Ray, Ray has told me his why. I've, you know, known Ray for about a year now. And like, he's part of my why now. I can't quit this business because I owe it to Ray to show up and be there for him. Mm -hmm. I can't quit this business because I owe it to you to do whatever I can to help you. I, I can't quit this business because I owe it to everyone who has trusted me and has signed up with me and has decided, you know, I want this because I need it for X, Y, and Z and has told me the reason why. I can't quit. Every morning I wake up and I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I don't feel well. I can't not do it. Yo, if I don't put trades in the group, I get text messages because people are relying on the trades I put out to make money legit yo i could show you <laughs> like i get messages like no trades today i'm sorry there's no setups i don't see anything it's not a good day <laughs> you know you don't want bad setups the goal is to make money but you know people are relying on that and i've, I've made it a commitment to share trades with people to make money so during the week like if i see it's tuesday and like i haven't put anything out like i'll go and do the works to find something good so that people can make money. But that's a commitment I've made and I want to keep, I keep up because I don't make promises I can't keep. At least I do 100% my best to not break promises because that's important to me. You know, keeping my word, having loyalty, like all that's important to me. And for people to trust me and to believe in me to help them get there, I will never quit on them. You got to give me an amazing reason to quit on you. Mm. And so my why changes every day. It grows every day. There's so many people in this world who need this information, who need this access, who need help, who need guidance. And I've gone through so much in the business and I've grown through a lot of it that I literally can help people. And I have. And I want to continue to do that. And so my why just becomes a ball of different things and that's totally fine because your why has to be so big that you can't quit there's no way i'm quitting like there's there's no way i'm quitting this because it's not even about me anymore like yeah i still want to travel the world yeah i want to do all these things um, whether it's personally for myself or things that I want to accomplish, but it's, it's way bigger than that. You know, it's way bigger than that. And so it constantly changes and, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing because it's what keeps me going. When, when you want to, it's easy to quit on yourself sometimes. Like, think about it. There'd be nights, there'd probably be days where you used to wake up and you're like, yo, I just don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like getting on this call. You don't get on but when you know somebody else is relying on you and, you know, their life or their situations on the line, you actually might get up and do it because you don't want to disappoint people or, you know, you, you actually want to make sure that they get what they need out of it. And that's what pushes you to continue. But the best thing about that is if that's what makes you or allows you to keep going, then that's a great thing because sometimes we need that extra push. So having a bigger why is is amazing for me because when i really am down and out it gives me energy fires me up fires you up yeah because i'd be like damn i just want to sleep i'm not tired and then they'd be like yo any rest and i'm like i can't and they're like 
but you haven't slept. And I'm like, I can't. And they're like, you got it. And I'm like, I can't. And they're like, why? I'm like, because I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can, but I can't. I can't because I've made a commitment. I've committed to myself to do X, Y, and Z for said people. And I've, I've made that commitment to myself to hold myself accountable mm -hmm. for those things. And so for me, I have to. I don't really have to, but because of who I am and because of my belief levels, because of the promises I choose not to break, the promises I make, I can't. And so my why expands, but it's a good thing. Because trust me, there's nights where I was just like, I would not do this. <laughs> I, I, I'm not doing this. But I know like, they need me. This person needs me. They're calling me. Somebody needs help right now. Somebody has questions. Pick up the phone, get it done. And then when you get that, thank you. Thank you. I quit my job. Thank you. My mom finally accepted money from me. She was happy for me. Thank you. My grandma said, you know, she's so grateful for you. Thank you. I, I withdrew my first thousand. Thank you. This is the first money I made. Thank you. I finally understand this. Like, it makes it so much worth it. And, like, how can you be mad at that? Like, there's no possible oh. way. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Somebody's gonna look back at this shit like, damn, Ellie's a real inspiration, you guys. <laughs> Are we playing, man? I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Last and foremost question would be what you gonna do now? What's the move? We was What's talking about. Move? As we was talking about evolving, we was talking about, you know, those type of niches, but what about now, though? I'm hearing you talk about, you know, all of these things, and, you know, it's an inspiration just hearing from you, you know what I'm saying? But, like, what, what is it? What's now? What's the, what's the move, bro? Like, what what rank are you right now? What's your current rank? 1,000. You're 1,000? I was really expecting to say Chairman 10, but, all right. Seven, ten. <laughs> Nah, but apart from that, like, really, what's the move now? Where do we go from here? From here, my goal is to, I am so grateful and thankful now that I have helped create 15 new P1000s. Mm. My goal is to leave Philly helping 15 individuals become P1000s. And to to literally impact a total of 500 individuals. I am not leaving Philly until I do that. Mm. Listen, I did not mm. low key high key expect or want to really come here, but I'm here because I know it is extremely necessary. I know the benefits. I know the possibilities. But more importantly, I know 100% for a fact I needed to be here. I know that. So my, my answer for coming here was never no. It was like, wherever I need to be, I need to be. And now that I'm here, I'm not leaving until I complete my task. And so I got to get that done ASAP. <laughs> because they said you start, the, you start with the end in mind. And my end is already leaving Philly. I mean, I've been here what, two, three days now. I've been to Philly before. But... I, I'm not going to lie, I do like it. I can literally see myself staying here. There's so many great aspects to it. I've been having a great time. How's it but, How's the energy? Oh, it's nice. Yeah? It's yeah. nice. It's, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a tour after. I'll give you a tour after. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a tour after. But, um, <laughs> I, I'm starting with the end in mind. So I already see myself out of here going to another state, helping another 500, helping another 15 individuals go P1000. So right now, it's just get it done. Get it done. Next 90 days, 
y'all just gonna have to wait and see. Let's just say that. It is November seventh. Oh my! I love these timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're supposed to have a tape recorder like it is November 7th, 10 32 6 seconds. <laughs> the budget. Yeah, I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> Nine, whatever in the central. Drop the location. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But nah. Uh, you have it, man. That's Ellie's plan. You feel me? You said what? That was Ellie's plan. Y'all heard from the yeah. cowgirl. No goat in here. Only cowgirl. Yo! <laughs> man, that went over everybody's head. Yo. <laughs> That's so funny. Bruh. So, what's your plan? Where you see yourself? In a year from now? In a year from now. Um, yeah, I have. I recently just bought this Michael Cord watch, and it got to change to an AP. Show that again. From a year it flashed now. a little blind to me. What? AP? I'm saying from a year from AP now. AP more than one. got to change to an AP. You know nice, so. nice, nice. That's why I see myself. I see myself. Like, real talk, like, today in the launch pad, like, I was really seeing the vision. Like, look. I'm gonna say this like we was watching, we was on the on the convention, right? And were you were you listening when David and Monitia was uh uh he was like counting down to seven, and he was like yeah. put my hand on your heart and I want you to see the vision, right? And we was just there, we was just all quiet and I had my eyes closed. And I was really just manifesting in my in my vision, like really, you know, like I was just like man, like I really see myself like in a mansion like over there in like, I don't know Florida and Miami I'm not really sure but it gotta be a mansion you feel me I yeah an AP in my wife like I see myself taking that responsibility really and truly of impacting 500 people you know what I'm saying like that's what it is called chairman I guess so to speak you know it's, I just gotta take that responsibility for myself you know like a lot of people always talk about, we got to go chairman and things of that nature, but it's like, you know, it, it really comes with the responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility, you know? So that's why I see myself, I see myself in that position. You know, I don't know, it's, it's going to be a journey, but don't expect what you don't expect. Today, Listen, man. They I'm don't sorry. lie about that. New levels, new devils. Mm. So you will have great responsibility but it's all worth it i do remember that moment so i had my eyes closed and i was like what they say if you could see it in your mind you could hold it in your hand it's yeah. definitely true it was like the minute you start believing and you make that decision it's done it's done okay. how do you feel like your belief level has changed now that you like you were at the, you know, at the house and, you know, David did that moment counting down. You were able to envision it and you're like, yo, it's real. Because, like, a few weeks ago in convention, you know, I feel like you had that same feeling. Do you feel like your belief level from then and now increased? Um, I'll say this, like, when I was talking to you about the challenge, like, your biggest challenge, like, yo, like, I heard this one time somebody said, like, the easiest thing to do is going chairman, but the hardest thing to do is believing in it. And I was like, and I was so confused. I was like, isn't it supposed to be the other way around? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, now I get it though. Like, now I know what they mean, you feel me? Like, like at that moment, motel game, like it's cool because it's like, you get to be around the, the motivation. You get to be around the environment, you feel me? Like turning away everybody is like, you screaming and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna go, go chairman 10 and just, you know, like, things like that but it's like really when you're alone in a room by yourself it's like now we really gotta put in the work you know so it's like when you ask me that like i don't know yo like i feel like that's my the, the breakthroughs that i'm going through right now you know like each and every single day that i'm around my family in the lounge pad like my belief system increases like like just faster and faster you know like i can feel it just every day just building up building up building up you know what i'm saying like i don't know if you heard my rosa today say he was like if you can go, um, 
if you could go like a year back from now, he was like, what's the one thing that you would change? And he was like, believing that I could do it sooner. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, like, belief really matters in this business, yo. Like, it really matters in this business. So, like, I wouldn't say that, you know what I'm saying, that my belief system is all the way up here, you know, because I'm being honest with myself, just not to you. You know, like, yeah. I'm working on that for you. Every day I just, I write it down. Like, every day I write it down. Every single day I'm looking at pictures for the things I want, you know, whatever it might be. You feel me? Like, I ain't gonna lie, that's why I got this watch. Because even though it's not an AP, it's just, like, I don't see it for what it is, I see it for what it can be. You understand what I love it? So it's like, nah, I see this like an AP. Even though it's a Michael Kors watch, an AP to me. You feel me? So it's just every day I'm building that spirit. Every day I'm believing that, that, that belief system, you know? And I'm just not gonna stop until it gets to the point where now I'm just like evolving faster and sooner, you know? Yeah. It's scary, bro. Gotta do it, yo. I mean, it's like it's good that you're you're saying like every day you're you're working towards that, and every day you see it going up, cause that's that's the point, right? Every day becoming better, becoming a better version of yourself. Every day, you know, becoming better at the skills, better at developing your belief, like just developing everything all around. And that's really what the difference is, cause look like. When you, um, you know, the fact that we go to events and everyone's screaming, see something to do the gang, see something to do the gang, like everybody going to cheer in this room. Yeah. And then two months later, half the room is gone. What happened to your belief? You just said, see something to do the gang, and now you're gone. How? <laughs> right, I thought we all had belief, but it just shows you. Right? Belief is like Wi-Fi. We don't see it, but it got to be there. You know, and that's it. If you have it, you connect it. You always connect it. Yo, can I ask you something? Yeah. You believe in God? You, know, you said what? You believe in God? Are you spiritual? I do. Um, I'm not religious, yeah. but spiritual, you know. <laughs> but I believe. I just heard somebody say one time, like, yo, like, have you ever seen the vision before in your head? And he wants to do it. The vision of what? I said, uh, if if you ever seen a vision, you know what I'm saying? Like, the vision, like, what people really mean is vision of, like, when you see yourself in the future being successful, you know what I'm saying? So if you ever seen that in your head, that's just him talking to you, saying that this is what he wants to give you. He's showing you a preview of life's coming attraction of what's already done. It's just really you having to go get it. It's funny that you say that because, like, that's how I see my deja vus. I see it as, like, just confirmation that I'm exactly where I'm at. Funny thing is today, like, my deja vus come differently now. And funny thing is today I had a, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was plugging something in or I don't know. And I was just like, oh, wow. Like, I I did this already. Right. But they don't hit, my deja vu's don't hit the way they used to, because I used to be like, oh, this is happening, and like, that's kind of how my deja vu's happen, but now it's just like, it just hits me different, and I'm like, oh, I did this before, okay, so I was supposed to be here, that's cool, that's just confirmation that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, and I love it, because it's just a reminder that I'm going down the right path, like, I'm aligned with my future, I'm aligned with my purpose, like, I'm totally aligned. So if I don't have a deja vu for a long time, it's like, yo, what's going on? Talk to me. Give me something. But, you know, it's nice to just have that confirmation of, like, cool. Yeah, but apart from that, you guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this interview. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all stay blessed. I hope y'all stay positive. Because the bottom is way too proud of you guys. Out of here. Meet us at the top, though. <laughs>